Hello, the topic for today is reliability and reliability is really a concept about maintaining system performance. It's usually uh, talked about in the discussion in the context of uh, maintenance or uh, or equipment uh, and you'll see why as we as we get through. But it's an important concept and one that uh, merits discussion. Uh, <clears throat> I'll cover in this short video sort of the concepts of reliability and and maintenance introduce how to calculate reliability and in a separate video I'll I'll go through uh, a couple of examples uh, to highlight what we're looking for so <clears throat> maintenance and reliability are important because it's it's important to maintain the performance of a system usually a production system but it can also be a service system uh, but generally, we talk about this in the context of, uh, of a production system and equipment, and we talk about reliability to, to ensure that it works and maintenance to, to uh, reduce breakdowns. So reliability is the probability of a breakdown and maintenance is uh, to, um, to avoid a breakdown. So failure... Uh, really has a lot of ways that it can affect firms uh, interrupt operations it can affect your uh, reputation can affect profitability really important that uh, you have customers who are unhappy you're paying employees who uh, uh, who uh, aren't productive because the system has broken down uh, and you're reducing your return on investment in the plant so so reliability and maintenance are critically important so maintenance is really all the activities involved in keeping a system's equipment in working order so sometimes you'll shut down and do regular maintenance uh, you know just upkeep uh, but it can also be training and other things to make sure that people are using equipment correctly and to keep it running so maintenance is about keeping things going and reliability as i said earlier is the probability that a machine will function properly for a specified amount of time so reliability is the probability that you're going to have a failure and maintenance is the the activities involved in reducing the risk of that failure we can uh, change the probability by improving the performance of individual components and we'll talk about that shortly or we can provide redundancy and redundancy means if we have one piece of equipment or one process and it fails if we have what's called a redundant or backup process so that it kicks in so that the process only fails if both of these elements within the process fails and maintenance is implementing or improving preventive maintenance and increasing repair capability so that if you do break down uh, you recover more quickly so i'm not going to talk any more about maintenance i think maintenance is relatively straightforward uh, and this isn't a an actual production class where we would talk about elements of maintenance it's important just to understand those basics we are going to talk about reliability because reliability is more of a of a strategic measure measure and, and what happens is the reliability of the system is the product of the individual pro reliabilities of the components of that system. So what that means is reliability is a probability. It is always a number between zero and one. So as you can see, as we multiply numbers between zero and one or probabilities times each other, that becomes a smaller and smaller number. So even if your performance is 90%, 90%, if, if we had two elements and they were each 90%, uh, the reliability of the, of the system would be uh, uh, 0.81. And if we had another one, it would go down. So reliability decreases rapidly with more components in the system. So here's an example. If, if you have 0 0.9, 0 0.8, and 0.99, all of those individually look pretty good, but because you multiply the probability of that failing times the probability of that failing times the probability of that, no, 
no, actually, I should restate that. Not the probability. Of, the probability of that not failing. Uh, the probability of that not failing, the probability of that not failing times each other, you get 0 0.731. So even though these look relatively good, it decreases quickly, and, and the probability uh, uh, that that system works throughout is only 0.713. So you can see paying attention to these and building redundancy in becomes critically important. This is where I was using my... Uh, 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 where I was 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 confusing my words. The reliability is uh, the reliability is the probability that it works. The failure rate is uh, the probability that something fails. So here you've got the number of failures times the number of units tested or the number of two units we have times 100%. So you get a failure rate as a percentage, and it is the invert or it is one minus. Uh, the, the reliability uh, and the failure rate n which we're not going to spend a lot of time but is good to know multiple choice type question is the number of failures times the number of unit hours of operating time and so this is a percentage that is just not uh, considered within time units and this one is in time units so uh, this would be the number of failures in all of our machines running for 100 hours, as an example, rather than just looking at a fixed uh, test rate. And then the mean time between failures is the time that you can expect the system to run without a breakdown uh, is 1 over this FRN, or the, the failure rate of N hours. And so that is another measure. Of course, that is a, an estimate. It can, because these are uncertain, it can happen more quickly or it can happen less quickly, but this is the mean time between failures that we're looking at here. So let's look at this first example. We have 20 air conditioning units designed for use in NASA space shuttles operated for a thousand hours. One failed after 200 hours and one after 600 hours. So the failure rate, the failure rate percentage here is 2 divided by 20 is 10%. So the failure rate was 10% of these air conditioning units failed. Failure rate. The failure rate N, sort of over that whole 1,000 hours, is 2 divided by 20,000, which is the total number of hours of everything worked the whole time, right? 20 times 1,000, minus the time that things didn't operate. So this one failed after 200 hours, so there were 800 hours that it wasn't running. And this one failed after 600 hours, so there were 400 hours that it wasn't running. Sorry for my bad writing there. So we take the 20,000 and we subtract 800 plus 400, which is 1,200, the time that we didn't have operations because those units had, had broken down. And, and our failure rate per unit hour is 0 0.000106 failures per unit hour. So for every unit, for every hour that those units operate, uh, you would expect 0 0.000106 failures. Now, given these are units that are going into space, that might still be high, but that's why we have a very low number. So the mean time between failures is the inverse of that. So is 9,434 hours between failures. So. Uh, if we're going to be up in the space shuttle for more than 9,000 hours, we might have to we might have to use several, and that's how we build redundancy in. So those are the types of things uh, that uh, we might think about uh, as we are doing reliability or, or as we are making decisions on process design. So the failure rate per trip uh, 
FRN times 24 hours times six days per trip, what I talked about just in the last one, would then be 0 0.000106 times 24 times six. So this was per hour. This is 24 hours times six days. Uh, so we'd have 0 0.153 failures per trip. So in this circumstance, we have uh, uh, an expectation that uh, in just over 15% of the time on a trip, we would have a failure of that unit. Uh, and so, so that might mean we would want to build some redundancy in to reduce the probability that that would happen. So to, to build redundancy in, the probability to provide background components to a, a system, it, it increases the reliability. So if you have a, a if you have a second component where you're building a second where you're where you're having a backup piece of equipment or a backup part of the process you you then calculate the probability of the first component working plus the probability of the second component working times the probability of needing that second component which is so here you have the reliability and here you have one minus the reliability which is essentially the failure rate so the reliability and the failure rate are sum to one so in this case we have point, point 0.8 which is the reliability of the first component plus point 0.8 which you don't always have exactly the same but this is the probability that these are similar components so they have the same probability of it working times the probability of needing that second component. So you've got 0 0.8 plus 0 0.16 equals 0 0.96. So just by putting that one backup piece in, we've increased the probability from 0 0.8 uh, to 0 0.96, even though this one does not have a reliability that is that high. But what you've done is said 80% of the time this is going to work, and if it fails, this will work 80% of the time as well. So that combination will give us 96% reliability. So that's how, we, that's how we calculate and look at building redundancy into the system. We have a backup which increases the reliability. So here, a redundant process is installed to support the earlier example where RS was equal to 1.5. 0 0.713 so here we have uh, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 we usually if they are in sequence like this that usually represents a uh, consecutive processes and if you have like this connections whether it's an out uh, 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 whether it's an arrow or just a line but no con no connections between them here that means these are backups. So in this case, we have the 0.9, the 0.8, and the 0.99. That reliability, if you recall, was 0.713. We've now built a backup of 0.9 and a backup 0.8. Again, this doesn't always have to be exactly the same. It can be older equipment with lower reliability. It can be whatever. In this case, all we've done is put identical units in here so that if one fails the other one goes <coughs> and we can see that it will increase the probability uh, of uh, or of, of success from 0.713 to 0.94 again while this one is at 0.99 these ones are lower but we've increased their probability to 0.99 and 0.96 by building that redundancy into the system. So redundancy improves reliability. Things to remember for reliability is in sequence you multiply them by each other in, uh, in parallel where we have the, 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 the backup uh, you calculate uh, the, 
the original reliability plus the reliability of the backup times the probability that you'll need that backup or the failure rate. So, maintenance, again, designing machines that are reliable, easy to operate, and easy to maintain. Emphasizing total cost of ownership when purchasing machines so that the service and maintenance are included in the cost. Uh, so if you have a more reliable machine, you require less, uh, you require less uh, maintenance. So that total cost of ownership is, uh, is not only the acquisition cost, but the expected service and maintenance costs that are included with that. So sometimes the more expensive to purchase machine will be actually cheaper uh, because you won't require as much man maintenance. So that concept is an important one, often shows up on multiple choice exams in my experience. Developing preventive maintenance plans that utilize the best practices of operators. Yeah. Again, doing things right and training uh, staff so that they see the warning signs and are proactive in maintaining their equipment so that you avoid failures later. So, to wrap up, quick introduction to maintenance and reliability. Reliability improvements can be made through the use of maintenance, can be made through the, uh, in, uh, uh, through the uh, use of redundancies. Uh, in maintenance, you should give employees ownership of their equipment, quote unquote, to enhance preventive maintenance. If they're responsible, if they're accountable, and if they get credit for when things go good, go well, you can, you can improve reliability just by having someone keep a closer eye on it. Uh, and reliability of equipment will drive out variability of systems and leads to that customers can rely on products and services to be carried out to specifications and on time. And we calculate reliability in, in series uh, by multiplying them and in parallel we uh, we look at the individual reliability plus the reliability of the backup times the failure rate. That's a quick introduction uh, in 20 minutes or less to reliability really gets you the key things the key concepts you need to know. I will upload shortly a second video which goes through some examples of calculating reliability, which should give you the, the whole picture that you need for an introduction to reliability in operations management.